Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the meeting is now being live streamed. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual meeting of the East Subarea Planning Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I would like to outline the protocols for today's meeting. Uh, before uh, today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may, if they wish, choose to use their video. If the council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, we will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If any member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn the meeting for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphones. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you accordingly. The voting for today's meeting on the applications will be by roll call of members who will answer for, against or abstain. And the results will be clearly heard and announced by the Democratic Service Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We do have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting via a telephone link. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item can indicate so by raising their hand function on their panel which is being monitored by my Vice Chairman, Councillor Adrian Parsons. Any members not on the committee or unable to use the raise your hand function, they can ask to put a question forward by indicating an X in the chat box. I'll now pass across um, to the Democratic Services Officer to ask committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. Cross to yourself, Rowan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I will now call your name. Please confirm your name and your electoral division. Councillor Batters. Um, good morning, Chris Batters. My electoral division is Lenivet and Blisland. Thank you, Councillor Parsons. Good morning, Adrian Parsons from the Elton Nun Division and Vice Chairman for today. Thank you, Councillor Burden. Uh, Neil Burden, Stoke Limson Division. Thank you. Councillor Craker. Nick Craker, Liscard North Division. Thank you. Councillor Eddy. Good morning. My name is Martin Eddy and I represent St Clear Division. Thank you. Councillor Flashman. Councillor Flashman, are you there by telephone? Uh, Rowena, I don't think he is yet. OK, no problem. Thank you. Councillor Greenslade. Fred Greenslade, St. Dennis and Nanpian Division. Thank you, Councillor Holly. Derek Holly, Saltash East Division. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Barry Jordan from the Tintagel Division. Thank you, Councillor Long. Good morning, Councillor Long, Callington Division. Thank you, Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Penryn West. Thank you, Councillor Mould. Good morning, Carol Mould, member in St. Andelian Division. Thank you, Councillor Pascoe. Good morning, Councillor Pascoe, Liscard West and Dog Wars Division. Thank you, Councillor Pugh. Councillor Pugh. Good morning, I'm Richard Pugh. I'm from the Trelawney Division. Thank you, Councillor Tamlin. Good morning, um, Sam Tamlin, South Ash West. Lovely, thank you very much. That's all, Chairman. Uh, uh, Emma Code meeting producer. I think Councillor Flashman is now on the call by telephone. OK, Councillor Flashman, can you confirm your name and your electoral division, please? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, 
I, I've been stuck on the um, uh, phone for about half an hour and I've been able to get in. I've had to redial. So um, I'm Jim Flashman representing um, Kelly Bray, St Dominic and St Melian Division. Thank you. I can confirm that the following officers are also president. Present. We have Gavin Smith, Development Manager, Vanessa Ormerod, Lawyer, Amy Williams, Senior Development Officer, Paul Steen, Highways Officer, and myself, Rowena Brevner, Democratic Services Officer. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, can we start item one, please, with the apologies? Any apologies? No, no apologies, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Item two, declaration of interest. Are there any declarations of interest in connection with today's application, please? I take that as a no. Yeah, take it as a no then. Moving on to agenda item three, the minutes of the previous meeting, they've all been circulated and no doubt you have read them. Can I ask for a proposer and seconder towards accepting those minutes, please? Can I have a proposer? I'd like to propose it, Jim Flashman. Uh, we, we got Carol Moe came up first proposing. We'll have Jim seconded if you like, Rowena. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Um, can I have a, a show of raise your hands, please, for those in favour of them being a accurate record? Please show by raising your hands on this one. Favour. And Jim has voiced his in favour. Yes, certainly, Chairman. Thank you. OK, thank you, Chairman. That has been carried. OK, all hands are lowered. To Adrian and Dublin. All down, Rowena? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, all down. Fine. In that case, we'll move on to our first application. And uh, this application is PA20 stroke 00248. And it's lands south of Bellevue, Higher Lane, Eglis Hale. And the application is being presented by Amy Williams. Across to you, Amy. Thank you, Chairman. I'll just share my screen. Can you just confirm you can see that, please? Yes, clearly seen. Thank you. Perfect. OK, uh, agenda item 4.1 is for land south of Bellevue in Edgarshale and it's for a proposed detached dwelling. The key issues with this application is whether or not this is a suitable location for housing, together with the suitability and safety of the proposed access arrangements. This is the first location plan which just shows the site in connection with the larger Edgarshale and Weybridge area. And this shows just a more um, honed in map showing the site itself. And then an aerial view of the application site. This is the proposed block plan which shows the dwelling to be sited in the rear garden of Bellevue and the access lane going on to Tower Hill. The proposed elevations of the dwelling and the floor plans together with a site section which just shows where the access lane will be and then the garden. So the first photograph is the application site looking back towards the host dwelling of Bellevue and then the other view looking from Bellevue down towards the application site and the dwelling will be in this lower section of the garden. This shows the boundary treatments and the neighbours. And this, up, this photograph shows um, the access lane, which is referred to as Dowdry Lane. And the following, this photo and the following photo show the junction of the, the proposed access route with Tower Hill. So in terms of the balance of considerations for this application, it is considered that the proposal qualifies as infill development situated within a recognised settlement and therefore is in accordance with policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan. The access lane junction with Tower Hill itself, however, is substandard in terms of visibility, 
width and intervisible passing and therefore we consider this proposal will result in a material increase in vehicle movements using this substandard access. The social, economic and environmental benefits associated with introducing a new home are in favour. However, on balance, it is considered that the proposal utilises an unsafe vehicular access point to serve the dwelling and as such, the application is recommended for refusal. That's the end of the presentation, Chair. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, we do not have any public speakers, um, so it is straight to Councillor Knightley, the divisional member for that area. Um, Steve, you have five minutes, at which time I will be looking for you to wind down. So we'll cross it over to you. Can you remove your your screen, Amy, unless we call it back up, please? Thank you. So to cross to yourself, Steve, five minutes uh, and then wind it down, please. Thank you. Uh, OK, Chair, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I, I have received um, recommendations for this application. I've also had members of the public saying they don't like it. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag. The town council um, voted to recommend uh, the application and, and I, I, I was requested by the town council to bring it forward. So at least the planning committee could discuss this um, and, and, and there could be a bit of a, a debate about it. Uh, I, I've got to say, I, I've called it in. Uh, there are other buildings on Tower Hill, Hill that have been allowed in the last uh, couple of years or so that have very similar accesses onto Tower Hill. So, you know, in, in a way, is, is this access any different from any of those? But I actually also understand the comments that the um, planning officers are making about the access. And I, I, I think as, a, as, a, as the divisional member, I, I really felt that the, the fairest way of dealing with this was to throw it open, open to the committee for debate. Uh, and then I feel I've represented everyone in my division and, and, and not, not just the applicant and not just the people who are against it. Um, but, you know, I, I can see fours and fours for it and I can see reasons against it as well. Uh, if the town council um, hadn't recommended approval, I would not have called it in. Uh, I'm really chairman. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Steve. Are there any questions from members of Councillor Knightley at this moment? Yes, I'd like to make a question to Councillor Knightley if he's able to answer it. Jim Flagman. Go ahead, Jim. Yes, go ahead, Jim. Uh, have you any indications or have you done any surveys on how much traffic is actually using the road at the moment, say per hour? Uh, there's, there's, uh, Jim, there's two dwellings that have got access to Tower Hill from um, from this lane. So uh, any movement from that little bit of a lane is, is very low. Uh, there's only two dwellings that have an access um, uh, off of that little lane. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And the highways officer is in attendance, Jim, if you wish to put that question in him short. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, Derek Holly, your, your hand is up. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, can I ask, can you drive out of that little spur of lane into the main lane with and get visibility from the car? Because normally it's about sort of seven to eight feet behind the front of the bonnet. Um, uh, no, Councillor Holly, Holly, no, you can't. Um, there's, there's a high wall on both sides. So, OK, thank um, you. You are sticking the nose of the car out into unknown territory. Thank you. Councillor Mould. Good morning, Steve. Um, Good morning. Are these the, the cars parked on Tower Hill? Presumably they are residents parking, is it? So it's not been double yellow lined or so it's resident parking up there, is it? Yeah, the, the, there's only residents up there. There's no businesses or anything like that. No shops. Um, it, it, it is just residents. I mean, it's a poor, it, it's, a, it's a very pretty little hamlet, obviously not designed to have cars at all. Um, so it, 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 it's very narrow. Um, uh, you, 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 by and large, you can get one car in one direction at any one time. Otherwise, people have to wait and, and hold up. So the, the traffic on the hill is very, very slow moving. And by and large, all the, the people who live there are very courteous of each other. But it is narrow. Fine, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, I, I don't see any other hands up. I take it that's correct and we'll move on. No, oh, that's fine, Chairman. Could I just ask Councillor Mould to lower her hand, please? Just. Thank you, Carol. Fine, in that case, we move on now to questions of the case officer. 
Um, so um, as I say, we do have highways here in Paul Spain. So um, open it to questions. Martin Eddy is the first one I see up. Thank you, Chairman. And, and um, um, Amy might not be able to answer this, but I noticed that there were two consultations to Cornwall Council highways. So perhaps Paul might be in a better place to answer it, but uh, I see the second consultation provided him with additional information and I was curious what that information was. Um, yeah, it's Amy here, Chair. Um, the, yes, applicants, the applicants submitted further um, traffic assessments, um, which were then sent across to the Council's Highways Officer, Paul Steen. Um, and it was just an a, a assessment on um, how the access would be operated and, and the general level of traffic, I believe. Um, but obviously, Paul would have looked at that, that information in detail. Um, but it was additional kind of traffic assessments that were sent in. Uh, and like I said, Paul did look at that, uh, but he still had raised that objection. OK, Martin. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. If you could lower your hand, then we'll go to Neil. Yeah. Neil Burton. Thanks. Um, my concern is how consistent are we? I mean, you know, one minute we allow these blind junctions to operate and the next minute we refuse them. In Stock Limsland, we had a big ding dong because it was an narrow entrance and nobody would say it was dangerous. Ironically, that was ongoing for several years. It got approved by the council. The property has never been built because nobody wants to buy it. And I just wonder, how, is highways being consistent or is it just a knee-jerk reaction on this one and, and the next one they support? I, I'm concerned that we're not consistent. Perhaps that's one for you, Paul. Our highways Thank officer, Paul C. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I'm here. Um, it's, it's not really a question about this application, but uh, generally speaking, we look at applications on their own merits and without the information on the, on the application and uh, council birds referring to. I can't really offer much more comment on that. No, it's as I expected, really. So that's fair enough. Are there any other hands up, um, Vice Chair? Can I, ask, can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Jim Blackman. Yes, certainly. I'm just coming to you, Jim, actually. <laughs> yes, oh, come you. on in. Um, Paul, how are you? Um, what I would like to know is has any consultation been done with highways to find out traffic movements? And um, uh, the basic uh, information that you have collated while you've been uh, making an inquiry into this uh, plan and application. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Councillor Fashman. Um, the, the, in terms of traffic assessment, we wouldn't do that on a scale of application this, this application is. Um, the concern is is regarding the actual lane itself and yes it serves two at the moment but when you add additional households you you then can't really control the movements over it if you imagine you have a lane where there's two dwellings you don't really know where your neighbor comes and goes it, it, it works in that regard but this this key point is basically about conflict and vehicles meeting each other in a lane and the second one having to reverse back out onto tower hill with the already substandard visibility is, is okay, that, Jim. Uh, now, is that uh, similar to most of the roads that we actually drive on in Cornwall to do with the actual drivers having some consideration for others? Um, I, I guess so, but in terms of highway design, I've, I've got to look at what's been in front of me and my concerns are that if this lane isn't, is, is substandard in terms of visibility, width and, and, and indivisible passing. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. I, I, I have Councillor Burden next, followed by Councillor Holly. Councillor Burden. Yeah, could I just refer to the highways officer? The application was PA17 oblique. Yeah, Neil, Zero. Neil, can I interrupt you? Neil, Neil, can I interrupt you there, please? Because we are actually looking at today's application and it has no connection with any other previous or possible future applications. We are looking at this one today. Paul did make that clear. So unless it's a, a question for clarification on this application, it's not admissible at this stage. Right, I'll write a letter. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holly. Thank you. 
Mr Chairman, <clears throat> can I ask Paul, I meant to ask this of the member um, when I asked the question about whether you can drive out. Can you see any way, can you see either right or left if you drive out of Dowdry? Is it safe to, can you see safely right or left? Thank you, Chairman. Um, morning, Councillor Holly. Um, the the councillor is correct that there's there's high walls on both sides of the access, so there's no there's there's little, if any, visibility as you emerge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Neil. If you could uh, lower your hand, please. Um, councillor uh, Councillor Rushworth. Um, sorry, not Councillor Councillor Lightly. Um, is there any questions at this point you wish to ask on this? You're you're able to do so at this moment in time. For clarification. Uh, no, I'm OK, thank you, Chairman. Fine. Councillor May, I saw your hand come up. Of course, you, Mary. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Chairman, and thank you. Um, I just wondered if there was any way forward with the highway officer. Is there any advice he could offer as a way forward to the applicant? Um, because we're told, you know, if we meet with officers, in particular planning officers, um, if it's a no, we're always asked, but is there another way we could do it? So is there another way that this access could be allowed? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good uh, morning, Councillor May. Um, as, as my comment kind of refers to, they don't control the land. So, that, so it, it, in reality, there's no scope to improve the junction. Um, the, uh, there was discussions had with the planning officer about um, and whether we put to them we take off vehicle access and have the dwelling without vehicle access and that would obviously mean that vehicles are parked on Tower Hill or they somehow gain access from the north through the existing plot. But um, up, to, up as far as I'm as far as I'm aware, we're considering the application as is proposed. Thank you. If you could lower your hand, please, Mary. Um, Next, next one up is Councillor Long, Andrew Long, followed by Sam Tam, Sam Parsons, sorry. Oh, Sam Tam. <laughs> no problem, you can call him whatever you wish to, Chairman. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you won't mind. Um, my question is for the officer, really. Given the strength of view from the highways officer, um, I presume this went back to um, the town council for consideration. Did they express a reason why they wish to bring it to committee despite the the planning officers the your the, despite the highways comments i'm just wondering in a sense why it is here given the strength of the highways officers comments yeah thank you councillor long um it was actually called into committee by councillor knightley before i even got back to weybridge town council um, because Councillor Knightley had been approached by the applicant and the agent, um, had been in discussions with myself. So it was actually called into committee by Councillor Knightley prior to Weybridge yeah. Town Council being informed. Yeah, I understand so that. When I then, so Sorry. then when it was then, I then went back to them and basically advised them that it was going to planning committee, um, that Councillor Knightley had called it in and, and to for them to note it and to let me know if they had any comments and I didn't receive anything back. OK, so as far it, it's just I'm a bit confused as to given the given the highways officer's comments, which I completely understand as to why why it was here. But I think Councillor Knightley did mention the fact that Cow Weybridge Town Council had recommended approval of the application. So I was just wondering whether there'd been any communication back with them to understand their reason why they recommended approval. Um, but anyway, we are where we are with it, so no problem. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Um, Councillor Tamlin, of course to you, Sam. Thank you, Chair. I seem to be getting confused with, with everybody today. Um, <laughs> I just wanted a bit of clarification from the highways officer. Uh, we're talking about visibility, but I think he also mentioned conflict, and I was wondering if it was because the lane is so narrow and there's no passing places. So could I just get some clarification on that, please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Councillor Tamlin. Um, the the conflict refers to as a consequence of the visibility uh, being substandard. If there's a vehicle emerging from the lane and a vehicle joins, uh, tries to enter the lane at the same time, they are they can't see each other until they're in the lane, and therefore 
the one that's coming from Tower Hill would have to back out onto Tower Hill or amongst amongst other manoeuvres are available but the, the, the easier one would be to reverse back out which of course is over a substandard junction so they'd be that's, once, back out. that's once they're in that lane the private lane yeah okay that's great thank you uh, no other hands up vice chair I, I can't see any I think um, that's covered everyone chairman Jim um, yes. Uh, we've got two or three rather large outlets uh, in my division, and they've put um, half moon mirrors on the opposite side with permission from landowners. And some of those, like Tavistock Woodlands, Kingston Down Quarry, and quite a few others, rely on those mirrors for 32 tonners to come out. So, and there haven't been accidents on any of those junctions, to my knowledge. Um, would this be uh, a way forward on this planning application? And that's a question to Paul, please. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councilor Flashman, um, we don't design access based on mirrors. We have mirrors on the network, we accept that, and they're generally provided for um, legacy accesses where the, 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 there's never ever consent sought for them. Um, we certainly see them as as additional uh, benefits to certain accesses, but we would never design one based on one because we can't That's control right. yeah. if it comes down or not. So um, it's, it's it's difficult in that regard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions, Vice Chair. I take it. No other hands up. I think that's it, Chairman. Thanks. Thank you. Before we go into open debate, um, Gavin Smith, Gavin, would you like to come in from the planning point of view? We've heard about the highways, the planning point of view in connection with the highways, with any comments you might wish to make before the open debate? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. This one for me is a balance of the benefits of producing a house in a main town, which way bridges against an unsafe access. Um, members probably know already it's, it's it's seldom we get a, uh, an objection from our highways team. And in this case, the case officer has been out to the site and agrees with the highways officer and that the access isn't suitable. So that's what you need to consider when, consider when you're looking at this scheme, the benefits of a house and a settlement. We think the design of the house itself is acceptable for that location. So the usual benefits should be attributed to it. It's, it's solely that versus access. Thank you, Chairman. Fine, thank you very much. OK, we now move into open debate in that case. So who would, uh, Councillor Mould, Councillor Long, across to you, Carol. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I note through the paperwork on page 17 that there has been an appeal um, for another property here, which was refused at appeal for the very reasons of the access. Um, I do know this site vaguely and it is very, very tight. And I agree with the highways officer that if you put a third dwelling on this little tight road, two you might manage because their neighbours, one, one might, a third puts a whole new scenario. And people do have visitors and people, you know, a four bedroom house, although it's perfectly possible to put it there, that is not two cars, that's sometimes four or six cars. You know, people, I just think the pressure on that junction would be far would be far too great and I and I can entirely agree with the highways officer you know though you can put a house there it is the access that's the problem so um, I just feel that in this instance highways have got it right thank you were you wishing to propose anything there Carol or you just want to hold for the moment um I want for the moment Mr Chairman thank you but happy to uh, I'll listen for a moment thank you fine um Jim, I'll put you in shortly or just just yeah. be the fourth one on. Right. We go across now to Andrew. Can you put your hand down, please, Carol? Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I think I've, having listened to this and looked at it, I see there's no, we have no reason whatsoever to disagree with the planning officer, the highways officer and the planning officer on this. I think the access is dangerous. Um, I would, you know, I would certainly um, agree with the highways officer we can't use mirrors for this sort of thing um having used to sell we used to sell mirrors for internal use and we were given specific instructions that then they're illegal to have them outside um on any new buildings and it's legacy ones that they're left on so in the absence of any other information i'll recommend um refusal of the application in line with officer recommendations thank you fine thank you very much so we have a proposer next speaker is Councillor Pugh, Richard, over to you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I visited this site yesterday, actually, and uh, I wanted to totally concur with the, um, the highways officer. This is a poor junction. It's very narrow. I'm not actually sure how they're going to get the parking in, but that's a different that's a, for another day. So I would happily second Mr. Long. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Fashburn, Jim, you wish to speak? Yeah, um, considering this is a private road coming in, um, I know the highway officer has been asked to make a, uh, his views, but he's already commented this, there is very little traffic coming up. Apparently there are only two other dwellings on the same lane that actually use it. And I would like to be contrary to that. And um, it doesn't stop anybody from actually giving someone to watch them out into the lane if it's that dangerous. But if there's a lot of traffic going up and down there, I would be with the rest of the, the proposer and seconder. But I would like to support this application. I think it's got merit. It's actually building as an infill site within Wadebridge and Wadebridge Town Council we want to be listening to. They don't seem to have got any objections, so I would like to propose that we accept this application as it is. Thank you. Right, thank you, Jim. Um, Richard, can you put your hand down, please? But looking at my list here, Vice Chair, um, I see no other hands. Am I correct? That's correct, Chairman. I think we're ready to move to the vote. Thank you. In that case, members, um, we have a proposal from Councillor Long and a proposal from, uh, sorry, seconded by Councillor Pugh to support the recommendations from the officer for refusal. Was there anything you wish to say before we go to the vote, Amy or Gavin? We you just go straight to the vote, I take it? Yeah, that's fine with me, Councillor Batters. Yeah, nothing for me, sir. In that case, if I can forward you or put it across now to Rowena to come through on the roll call for, against or abstain. For refusal, against refusal or abstain, please. Across to you, Rowena. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Abstain. Councillor Craker. For refusal. Councillor Eddy. For refusal. Councillor Flashman. Against refusal. Councillor Rick Greenslade. For refusal. Councillor Holly. For refusal. Councillor Jordan. For refusal. Councillor Long. For refusal. Councillor May. For refusal. Councillor Mould. For refusal. Councillor Pascoe. For refusal. Councillor Pugh. For refusal. Councillor Tamlin. For refusal. Councillor Parsons. For refusal. Councillor Batters. For refusal. Thank you. And so the motion for refusal has been carried by 13 votes to one with one abstention. Thank you very much. Um, we were scheduled to have a break at 10.50 uh, at for 10 minutes. Do you wish to proceed now for a bit longer or should we take the break now, members? Does anyone have any urgent need to disappear at this moment or shall we proceed further? Proceed, Mr. Chair. Proceed. Proceed. Thank you. Proceed. Right. In that case, lovely. Thank you very much. I've seen no hands going up against or anything. So in that case, we move on to PA20, item two on the agenda, PA20 stroke 00444, Main Park, Weatherham Lane, St. Judy. Um, and again, it's presented by Amy Williams. Across to you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just share the screen again. And can you confirm you can see that, please? Yes, I can. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Agenda item number 4.2 is an outline planning application for the erection of two dwellings at Main Park, Weatherham Lane, St. Judy. The key issues with this application is whether or not this is a suitable location for new housing and the impact of development on the landscape. This first slide indicates the proposal site for you, which is obviously outlined here in red in connection with the village of St. Judy. This is a closer up um, site plan for you. The red hash line is our current um, application site. 
Uh, also just worth noting that on this area of land here, there is a current outline permission for the existing house to be demolished and three new dwellings to be erected. Uh, and I just also would like to point out to members that there is also, which doesn't show on our plans, there is also a dwelling up on this area of land here. This is an aerial plan of the site. And these are the plans submitted with the application. Um, this clearly shows the, the three plots here that have already got outline planning permission and then the two plots in question in this application here. And this is just another plan that just shows that outline. And you can see there actually the agent has drawn in the new dwelling that has been built on that area of land. This is just some additional detail that was submitted by the agent as part of the application process, which just indicates a new Cornish hedge, which would be formed along the boundary for plot five. The photographs taken from site by myself. Um, this is a view from plot four, looking down towards plot five, the boundary of such being here. This is the boundary of plot five, um, just looking to the, the land that's owned by applicant beyond it. In this photograph, you can see plot four, which is just to the right, kind of behind that railings, and then plot five to the left. And just for context, you can see that summer house, which was in the previous photographs. And this is then me standing on plot four, looking back towards plot five and then the rest of the, uh, the rest of the applicants land ownership. This here shows the new, you can just see the new access road that was um, built as part of the previous outline application. And then plot, the plots that have been um, given permission are then behind that here. And this just shows the access improvements that have been made um, as part of the first outline permission um, to uh, Weatherham Lane. So in terms of the balance of considerations for this application, um, it, is, it is considered the application site is well connected to the settlement of St Judy and provides a suitable location for rounding off development under policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan. The proposal will introduce two dwellings onto a vacant site, which will impact on the character of the area. However, it's considered that any harm resulting from this is minor, as the new homes would be seen in association with the built form of the adjoining settlement. It is considered that the proposal adds to the housing stock in the area on a plot of land which is considered part of the settlement and therefore is a sustainable form of development. The application is therefore recommended for a conditional approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Amy. If you could drop your screen for the moment, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we now move to the first of our public speakers. Mr. Paul Tucker, are you there, Mr. Tucker, please? Is Mr. Paul Tucker in attendance, please? Uh, Chairman, Emma Code meeting producer, we do have a speaker on the line. Uh, if they could perhaps unmute by pressing star six on their telephone. Thank you. Hello, anyone there? Would that be Mr. Tucker, Paul Tucker? Nobody there, I take it, Emma? No, Chairman, I, uh, the, the participant is still muted. Uh, if they can hear me, if they can press star six on their telephone to unmute themselves. Hello, if it's Mr. Tucker, can you press star six on your telephone, please, to unmute yourself and. Hello, are you there? Hello. Chairman, if, if whoever the participant is who has dialed in, if they could press star six on their telephone so we know who they are. Yeah, can, did you get that message? Whoever is listening in on their phone, can you press star six and tell us who you might be, please? Good morning. Good morning. Who might Good you morning. be, please? 
My name is uh, Zoe Dillon Hodges from St Judy Parish Council. Ah yes, I brought you down as the next speaker. It's, could you hold for a moment, please? Um, Emma, shall we move on and possibly come back to Mr Tucker shortly if he's there? Uh, Chairman, yeah, if you wish to carry on with this current speaker, I'll try and get hold yes. of Mr Tucker and ask him to dial in again. Fine, thank you very much. Good morning, then, Zoe Newland Hodge. Welcome to today's meeting. Thank you for attending, even though it may only be on the phone. Um, you've got three minutes to tell us what you wish to say. We'll give you a 30 second warning before the end of that three minutes. But when you finish, can you stay on the phone in case there are any questions that the members wish to ask you? OK, Chair, Chairman, um, Emma Code meeting yeah. producer, could I just ask the, the speaker to actually mute their live stream because we're getting some feedback coming through on their telephone? They, they've got their live stream playing at the same time as they're on the telephone. I see. Um, excuse me being familiar with Zoe, but <laughs> did you hear that request? I, I did, and I don't have any sound on the speakers at all, so it's not me. OK, thank you, Chairman. Right. Um, Steve Rushworth has got his hand up, but that's later, Steve, not for the moment. Um, right, in that case, I'm across right. to you for your three minutes. Sorry, yeah. Who's that coming in now? Sorry, Zoe, it's a little <laughs> bit... Right, OK, it's across to you now, Zoe. You have your three minutes. Where you go, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and good morning. It's good morning. the view of St TDPC that this planning application will see new homes encroaching into open countryside, which is contrary to Policy 7, and it cannot be considered as rounding off nor infill read Policy 3. Some background information. St TDPC supported the applicant's previous application, PA1904773, on the grounds that the two plots, plus the plot on the site of the original house, would be built within the curtilage of the existing driveway and the row of existing trees, forming a natural boundary, as demonstrated by the supporting images on the Parish Council's report that was uh, submitted. Uh, St TDPC was deeply concerned that further applications would follow, but they were advised by the applicants that this wasn't their intention. And as a result, in good faith, the PC supported the application with reservations, which included the replacement of trees removed during the, de the, the development, and in particular, the protection of the inner hedge line along the driveway, which formed a natural boundary for the three new houses. So it's the view of the PC that this outline planning application, PA200444, is contrary to the applicant's prior reassurance. Um, on the opening statement uh, of the Cornwall uh, Council Committee report, it says the application site is well connected to the settlement of St Tudy, but there's no mention that Weatherham Lane is a privately owned lane. Uh, the poor access was highlighted by two previously submitted planning applications that were both refused, one of which was an appeal. And residents have told me um, on the parish council that they own part of the lane that fronts their respective properties up to the middle line um, as lodged under a caution on land registry title and that any developers should be aware of this in, in order to avoid uh, you know, potential future issues. Um, sewage disposal and uh, drainage plans have been clarified and it, it appears that both could might, you know, they could both be an open countryside, possibly within the statutory 50 metre limit of the adjacent Hornster Park well. Uh, the PC were also dismayed to see the extensive felling of, uh, of the trees taking place prior to the planning application. Um, St Judy PC hopes the committee can refuse this outline planning application for the additional two plots, as they have already supported three houses on the grounds of Mealy Park. The neighbourhood plan for St Judy is in its early stages, and brief survey results can be seen in the PC's report. And St Judy parishioners would definitely feel uh, disappointed that their views were not being considered as they go through this project, and they really don't want to see new homes encroaching into um, their uh, appreciated countryside, much appreciated countryside. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you could hold for the moment in case there are any questions from the members. Are there any questions from members for clarification purposes, please? Nothing's gone. Ah. Steve, Stephen Rushworth, Councillor Rushworth, uh, for clarification purposes. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Zoe, I, I understand you've lived in the village all your life. Um, can, can you tell me um, if, if 
in your recollection whether um, there was any uh, ever a natural boundary between the house and the proposed site, you know, or was it just you could come out of the house and walk easily into the garden, which is the normal practice uh, when it's in the curtilage? Um, well, I, I grew up in St Judy in the 70s and I've lived here for over 40 years and, um, you know, so far as I can recall, there's always been a boundary there. Um, I asked a, um, a, a lady who's uh, been in St Judy all of her life uh, in her 80s and uh, she confirmed the same. She said it's, she's always remembered a hedge um, with shrubs and trees. So basically, you couldn't actually see the ground from the house. Fine, thank you. Any, can you put your hand in, please, Steve? Are there any other questions, Vice Chair? I can't see any other hands up at the moment. That's everybody covered, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Emma, do we have Mr Tucker back on the line? Yes, we do, Chairman. Thank you. Hello, Mr Tucker. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the meeting. Um, you have three minutes to put across your objections. Um, and at the end of which, can you stay on the line in case there are any questions and clarifications to come to you? And we will give you 30 seconds warning before the end of your three minutes. So when you're ready, away you go, please. Thank you. Good morning. I'm a resident of Weatherham Lane and St 2D Tree Warden, and I object to this application. On this site, there's been considerable felling of trees by the developer in the hope of gaining planning approval. The house, now demolished, was derelict and the surrounding land was neglected by the previous owner since 1995. But although overgrown, the land became a haven for wildlife. Biodiversity would have been extremely high due to nature reclaiming the neglected land. The area for plots four and five had nine mature oak trees, subject to a group tree preservation order, growing on the plots along the entire northeast side. The tree canopy and root system Will extend a considerable way over and under the plots. The rest of the area was completely covered with mature trees, maybe planted as a shelter belt for the dwelling a long time ago. The developer has cleared these trees in an unsatisfactory way, as stated by your forestry officer in his comments. Losses due to the preemptive felling by the developer are highly significant to this site. And at a time when the council is promoting the forest for Cornwall to maintain and extend the tree canopy. Ironically, tree felling was in progress last year on the very day that the forest for Cornwall was launched by Greener Hunnaford. My request for a tree preservation order was rejected by Cornwall Council, who stated that climate change was not a valid reason. Cornwall Local Plan Policy 23 sets out the policy for the natural environment and the net gains in biodiversity. The planning web website states, Cornwall Council is now addressing how it can provide housing while simultaneously reversing declining biodiversity. Biodiversity net gains aim to leave the natural environment in a better state. It requires an increase in habitat value compared with pre-development. Therefore, net gain is not a license to trash. And that's the council words, not mine. It further states, which is important to this site, any loss of biodiversity on the site in favour of the creation of off-site gain will only be allowed in exceptional circumstances. So although tree planting on agricultural land is indicated by the developer, it cannot be used to mitigate tree loss already due to clearance of plots four and five. Conclusion. The application fails to meet the Council's policy 23 for the natural environment. Considerable 30 seconds remaining. Has taken place in anticipation of approval. The application does not mention biodiversity net gain. The track to plots four and five cannot be located as shown on the application as it goes through trees. And the canopy and roof spread of the tree preservation order oaks severely restricts the area of development. I conclude by the comments by the Cornwall Forestry Officer. Due to the level of felling that so far been undertaken to facilitate this proposal, no further tree losses. Three minutes, the Chairman. Yes. The application fails um, to protect. Or think, I'm afraid that's that's the three minutes, Mr. Tucker. Okay, thank you very uh, much for letting me yeah. speak to you. No, sorry, thank you, Barton. What? Sorry, what did you ask? I said thank you very much for letting me speak. Yes. Can you hold a moment? Can you hold a moment? Because there could be some questions to come to you from the members. Okay. okay. So if you can hold for the moment. Um, are you. there any questions for clarification purposes of Mr. Tucker, please? Please show with a raised hand if there is. 
Nothing showing, Vice Chair. Nothing showing, Chairman. In that case, Mr Tucker, thank you very much. Um, you can continue to watch this on the live stream if you wish. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you very much. We are now at the point where we are required to take a 10 minute break. Um, and we therefore will do, it is now uh, 10.51 if we come back at 11.01 to recommence. Um, Mr Wallacott is no doubt on the line. If you can hold for that 10 minutes, Mr Wallacott, you will be the next one on. But can I stress that can you ensure all microphones are muted? And Jim, can I ask you to ensure that your telephone is not put down alongside the A38 or anything like that where we might get some feedback? OK, so you, a 10 minute recession now. Thank you, Jim. You 10 minute recession. Or Thank you, sir. Here. Thank you. Bye. OK, 10 minute recession back 11.01. Thank you, members.
Chris. Chris, it's Derek. What's the um, poster behind you, the Charlotte Dimon thing? You're muted. You're muted. Yes, we are all muted for the moment because we are live, Derek. Nothing at all to discuss. Okay. okay. Uh, Chair, it's Emma Code, meeting producer. Just to say that when we do recommence, Rowena will just go uh, through an attendance list to make sure we're all back and present. Yes, certainly, Emma. Chairman, are you happy to reconvene? It's 11.02. Yes, certainly. If um, if you'd like to carry through a roll call, make sure everyone's present. Thank you. OK, thank you, Chairman. Um, OK, Councillor Batters. You just uh, present, yes. You, Councillor Parsons. Present. Right. Councillor Burden. Yes. Councillor Craker. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Eddy. Present. Councillor Flashman. Present. Councillor Greenslade. Present. Councillor Holly. Present, Madam Secretary. Councillor Jordan. Present. Councillor Long. Present. Councillor May. Present. Councillor Mould. Present. Councillor Pascoe. Present. Councillor Pugh. Present. 
And Councillor Tamlin. Present. Thank you, Chairman. All me members are back now. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. Um, we now go to our next public speaker, Mr. Peter Wanacott. Are you on the line, Mr. Wanacott, please? Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, a little bit faintish, but yes, we can hear you, I think. And everyone will obviously be uh, listening in intently to what you're saying. But you've got three minutes as usual. We'll give you a 30 second warning before the end. Um, and at the end of it, if you could remain on the phone for any questions or clarification there might be for you, please. OK, yeah. so away you go when you're ready. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, I note that I did, I did confirm that I support the case officer's report recommendation, of course, but I do have a few comments. Uh, Amy has already drawn attention to the additional house to the north and the three approvals that are already on the site. Um, the whole site was actually subject to a pre-app in a report dated uh, the 3rd of January 19, which advised that the site was deemed to be located within the continuous built form of the village and supported the development of five dwellings on the site. But so far, two of the, two of the dwellings have been approved in outline form and plus the replacement dwelling, so three have been approved so far. Uh, the historic maps from 1975 indicate the site was part of the garden to Main Park. Parish Council themselves state a paragraph six of the, their report of their comments, <clears throat> excuse me, that the site was a garden. There remains the original garden summer house at the northwestern corner of the site and a number of domestic species such as Japanese maple and laurel are in the garden area. In rural areas, gardens are deemed to be previously developed land and cannot be regarded as open countryside. A recent appeal decision in Piper's Pool confirmed this to be the case. It is not clear why, in the context of all this, that the ward member in the parish council consider the site to be an open countryside. Two additional dwellings proposed for the site would not cause any highways issues and the proposal is supported by highways. The applicants have indicated they are prepared to undertake extensive tree planting to the west of the site, approximately where, where the word proposal is written on the site map, released on the site map that I have, but you've already seen it on Amy's plan. The applicants are fully aware there is a line of TPO protected trees along the north and northeast site boundary. The development can be undertaken without impacting on these trees and full protection would be in place for them during the development. The hedge referenced by the Parish Council is still in place and has been actually been reinforced and all the tree felling referred to by the, uh, all the tree felling that's been referenced by the Parish Council was um, undertaken under the guidance and, and advice from the tree officer at the time. I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. If you could hold in, that's lovely. Are there any questions of the speaker for clarification purposes, please? Jim Flashman. Well, yes, Jim, away you go. Yeah, um, I did notice on here that the uh, uh, on some of the notes that uh, there was a bit of um, um, about sewage. About uh, has that been sorted out now? That has okay. been sorted out and it was sorted out um, some while ago uh, with the case officer. There's, we're proposing a treatment plant just outside, well, I think just within the site area and the foul sewage goes into the area of the land beyond the site area that's owned by the applicant, which is quite a normal procedure. Okay, and another question if I may, Chairman. Yes, um, yes. You said you were in consultation with the tree preservation uh, officer, is it a fact that uh, inside previous developed land, the, the, the tree officer is advice only? Um, I believe it is, but we did before we started any any tree felling or any clearance of, of the garden area um, under uh, before we started this proposal for the plots four and five. We consulted with the tree officer and we I think our tree we used our tree um, specialist to do so. We kept him informed and asked his advice all the way through. And I don't think the tree officer actually responded to the application until about April. But we started this uh, back in October last year. Okay, thank you, Thank you. Um 
Councillor Greenslade, your hand is up. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a question to the gentleman, please, if I may. I, I think you mentioned that there was a an application for an outline uh, permission which included five properties. Now, does that uh, reflect on the uh, design that we're considering at the moment, please? Um, the, the, I mentioned the pre-app, which was undertaken by the previous owner of the site before they put it on the market. And the pre-app, uh, the officer reported from that pre-app indicated that he he felt five dwellings would sit on the site uh, overall. Now and we've got an outline permission for two dwellings plus one replacement dwelling. So effectively, there's an outline permission in place for three dwellings on the site that the pre-app said overall could take five, including plots four and five. I hope that's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Eddie, your hand is up. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Peter, uh, I noticed the access road is going to go through this group of trees. Um, what discussions have you had to try and reduce the impact on those trees, your, the, the, where your access lane goes through them? Uh, the access road at the moment goes right up to the edge of the site. Um, it goes through two trees by means of uh, no, um, oh, I can't think of the word, no dig route. Uh, or, or no dig uh, a road, and then it'll and then it's straightforward into the site area. Then, um, and it is an, it says here, I believe, a no dig road is not acceptable to the council. Is that uh, perhaps so that's a question does, for the planning uh, officer? Uh, our tree officer says that Cornwall Council don't accept. So there's one British standard they won't accept, but we feel we can overcome that. We can overcome it um, one way or another. I mean, ne neither of the trees that it, it referred to are, are protected trees. Okay. So that's not to say we wish to cut them down because we don't. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Thank you. If you could take your hand down, please, Martin. Um, are there any other hands up, Vice Chair? I can't see any myself. No, that's it, Chairman. And when we move to questions of the officer, could I come in with a question, please? Yes, by all means. OK, thank you very much. In that case, we now move to the divisional member, Councillor Rushworth. Steve, you have five minutes, at which time I will be expecting you to wind down. Thank you, Chairman and members. Are you there? Yeah, I'm fine. You hear me? Yes, I can. Do, go ahead when you're ready. Uh, Chairman, members, thank you, thank you for allowing me to talk. Um, first, I, I, I would like to confirm that I was at the parish meeting um, when the applicants um, did say to the parish council that they only wanted the two dwellings and they weren't looking to, to build any more. I know that's not a planning issue, but I just want to confirm that I was there. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge that policies three and nine can support approval of this application, but they can also be used to refuse the application. And I will um, make reference to a, another application uh, it shortly. The case officer in a report has used the words the application is within the garden of the existing dwelling several times. In paragraph 16, she states further information will be provided by way of an addendum report to the evidence, the historic use of the site as a garden for Main Nine Park. That statement alone shows that the officer put great weight on the client's advice that the garden was part of the curtilage of the house. In the addendum, the application has tried to prove that application site is within the curtilage of the garden to do this, he has used a landmark historic map from 1975 an extract, uh, and an extract from the Auburn Cultural Report submitted with the applicant's application. This report was commissioned by the applicant. The information sent to me and all members of the committee on Friday clearly shows that the old North Cornwall district boundary uh, showing none of the application site included in the curtilage of the garden. garden uh, curtilages were always included in this process and I make reference to the house that has recently been built that was within the old uh, North Cornwall district parish boundary and I feel that many years ago um, uh, the, the house next door to that were all part of one application so it, it has been acknowledged for a long time that that would be a, a, a new house. The 
Uh, the Paris Council representative has stated that there's always been a barrier between the house and the application site. If the trees on the application site had not been removed prior to the submission, it would be an easy decision to say that application site is not part of the curtilage. And I also, and also the felling of the wood in areas is something that's going to be protected in the forthcoming climate change DPD. Um, the application I'm referring to is, is at St. Izzy uh, and uh, Gavin Smith will be aware of this application because we had many discussions about it. It was land at Potter's Lodge, Trinans, St. Izzy, uh, PA 19.08286 for two dwellings. Uh, it was supported by the Parish Council. It's a very similar application to this where there was a, a, an area of land by the side of a dwelling that was uh, it wasn't a wooded area, but it was in shrubs and the officers were refusing permission for this application uh, saying that it was going to enter into the open countryside um, on on the grounds that it wasn't part curtilage of the uh, of the house. Uh, eventually, um, um, the parish council got together, uh, uh, found some old residents who remember it being part of the house and definitely a garden and and the council would not accept that until an affidavit was um, was provided. And I think two, two of them were at that point, the, the planning officers then changed their mind. Um, so uh, I think it, uh, this is a very I important part. And I think if you did, if you try to find somebody to state that within the village of St. Judy, uh, you'd probably find that the answer would be the other way around. So, but uh, uh, if you are to approve or or refuse this application, in my opinion, it comes down to your view of the status of the application and how the land sits, whether within the curtilage or outside the curtilage. Uh, however, if you are if you are minded to approve, could I ask the condition is that a condition is asked for, asking for the area. Uh, uh, of tree cover that was removed to be planted from the start of the drive on the left hand side of the drive uh, going up to the house to its completion and on the top side of the application side with trees with tree protected for 30 years in line with the biodiversity policy and the and the oncoming uh, D, uh, climate change DPD. Uh, I think that's all I've got to say and and uh, thank you for listening to me and uh, I hope you'll come to the right decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions anyone, any members wish to make of Councillor Rushworth? If Jim, uh, not, yeah. Jim, sorry, yeah. Jim, yes, Jim. Yeah. Um, Councillor Rushworth, um, I don't know if you're aware, I should probably should have asked this question to the Paris Council representative, but is the Paris plan being accepted yet? Um, Jim, no, it's it, it's at a re reasonably uh, early stage. Um, I think that right. first they, they felt that they didn't need one because they were being protected by policies three and nine, but other applications and applications in other areas um, realised that that. Yeah, I think you I think you've answered it. Steve. It's in an early stage. Yeah, it's in early stages, much. isn't it? At the moment. I, I, yeah, I just want to say that you know this is going to be a big. Yeah, you, 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 you've answered the question already, so. We don't need to detail it any further and we can come back to that shortly with the the case officer um with yeah. regards to where that might, might sit okay Thank you. so Thank you, moving on now we move on now to questions of the of the case officer or any officer in fact of that so we have councillor parsons followed by councillor craker and councillor holly so it's across to you adrian me as well please chairman Thank yes, you, sir. Sir. Thank you, Chair. Hello, Amy. Um, Amy, can you just clarify with everything that's been said with the speakers that you um, consider this land to be within the cartilage of the garden? And if so, obviously, then it becomes previously developed land. Are you also certain the shed at the bottom of the garden is a summer house, which would go some way to indicate this is a garden? Um, and could you also clarify you're satisfied that the development can take place without damaging the trees with TPOs as there's been a lot said about them and it just muddles things a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Parsons. Um, yeah, officers, are, I am cons are, sorry, I am happy and content that this land um, was and is um, residential curtilage. Um, the addendum update that was sent last week um, did include a lot of information from 
the agents. However, the um, the very final um, section, which was the uh, uh, a picture of the mapping from our own intranet mapping, which um, showed the land kind of classifications. I don't know if you remember that map. It was like a green and red kind of blocks of colour. Um, that was actually sourced by myself from our um, the council's intranet mapping system, which clearly showed the uh, area of land in question as being classed as residential. So that wasn't submitted by the agent. That was something that I myself added to the addendum from our own records here at the council. Um, in terms, so yes, so in terms of the use of the land, we are content that it is domestic curtilage and therefore can be classed as previously developed land. Um, to come on to your second question about the um, trees and the protected trees and whether de development can occur, um, clearly this is only an outline permission. So we don't have any information on where these properties, we have indications of where they might be sited, but we don't actually have any information on where these dwellings would be on the plot. Um, the tree report and in fact the tree officer for the council um, also said that if this application were to be approved, then any reserve matters would have to be accompanied by a very robust um, tree report that discusses the root protection areas, that discusses how the dwellings could be placed on site without damaging um, the protected trees. Um, and let's not forget the protected trees are on that boundary, um, as the agent uh, Peter quite rightly said, um, that the, the trees within the site um, aren't protected. Did you have a third question? Sorry. Uh, thank you. Amy. No, you've covered it. The summer house was in there, but obviously oh, yeah. that was covered with your answer regarding the garden. So now, thank yeah. you. Well and, done. I did, I think... and I did go out on site and I have seen that summer house um, and I'm quite content that that's a domestic size and scale and use of a structure. OK, thanks. You've covered that perfectly. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, next question is Councillor Craker. Nick, over to you. Thank you, Joe. My question's actually been answered. It was about the trees. Thank you. I think I did see your hand disappear there, but I was just double checking. Um, Councillor Holly, Derek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? It's very yes, clearly. Very faint here. And um, it's again a tree one. Um, on page 28, the tree officer refers to a full and comprehensive report, which would be necessary, and that's the one you're referring to, which will come at the defer, the uh, later stages. Is that right? Uh, yes. So at the reserve matters stage, we would um, expect okay. a full yeah. report. But do you need to refer to that necessity in the conditions? Because there's nothing there except reference to tree uh, root protection. Um, it could be added. I'm just checking, actually. I was just checking through my conditions again. Um, and number seven has got extensive comments about how you can look out, look to protect the root systems. Yeah, so that's that's obviously a condition um, specifically relating to the root protection area. But what would happen as part of um, validation procedure and once an officer, if it be myself, deals with reserve matters, we would ensure that any um, any report submitted um, in is fully comprehensive and has the information that we require yeah. to determine the application. That's good, but Mr Chairman, because so many um, comments and from members and from the public have referred to trees, I think we ought to reference the necessity for that full and comprehensive report at this stage somewhere, if you if you could. Yeah, I think uh, that's obviously bring that up under open debate in a moment, Derek. Hey, thank or, you. Or, uh, can, I, can I have okay. that, Richard? Okay. Um, Thank you, Barton. Is that Gavin? Yeah, Gavin Smith, Group Leader Planning. Could I have yes, that? Just yeah. to add, Councillor Holly, it's a good question. Landscaping hasn't been submitted for consideration with this application, so at reserve matters, that's when we capture landscaping. So my advice on that would be if we, if you were minded to approve today, we could put an advice note on any permissions setting out what they'd need to do at reserve matters to address landscaping. Thank at you. At this moment, our that's condition that. is merely protecting the trees on the site. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank you, Gavin. Um, Councillor Fashman. Yes, my question's been answered. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Jim. Councillor Burton, yes. clarification. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, how are we going to stop the trees being chopped down in the meantime? 
the trees are protected you mean no uh, because there's been quite a lot of trees chopped down already it seems to be a Cornwall council habit uh, as they do before they release the site and now how do you stop these the rest of the trees that have not got the preservation order on being removed well as it currently stands if they're not protected then obviously as you know the council don't have any way in which we can stop tree felling happening um, i think a previous one of the previous um speakers did talk about the fact that a request had been put in for further tpos on the site but that had been uh, refused by the council so there's not really anything more we can do except for protect the trees that are protected by a tpo if i could just say to that again chairman it's gavin smith again it, it's a real it's a real challenge for planning yeah. to to sort out this dilemma that that the council has rightly brought out about how to protect trees that aren't protected and most of the times as you all know it's it's the is at the discretion of the landowner themselves um but the the, the council is spot on it's a it's a big challenge in planning to protect trees that aren't protected by tpo fine thank you Colin. okay neil uh across the coast of Rushworth, steve Steve, do you want to unmute yourself? I don't know if you're muted. Sorry, I am muted. Um, I, I've just got a couple of questions for a, a, a Amy. Um, uh, could you um, could you tell me whereabouts this um, this summer house is positioned? Is, is it in the curtilage of the garden or, or is it out into the meadow? It's in the very far corner of what we're deeming to be the curtilage. Um, if I do you, uh, Chair, do you mind if I, if I share my screen again? I could bring up one no, of the maps. No, certainly fine. Yeah. So I just so obviously you can see it there in that photograph, just so you kind of get your idea. And then it's pretty much where that kind of arrow is pointing, saying the proposal. It's almost kind of in that kind of area there, I would say. Can you see that? Yeah, I see yeah. That. Is that okay? Yeah, could, uh, Amy, could you leave the, could you leave the um, map up, please? Yep. Yeah. And for my second question. Okay. Yes, carry on. My second question yeah. was uh, what I mentioned in my report. What what the parish council are really concerned about is that because of this V, it's it could be argued that if you then straighten up the two corners, that that, that the applicant could then come back for a, another couple of houses in there, again for on the rounding off um, understanding. Um, so is there any way we can we can plant um, um, put some planting on the left hand side of the road right the way up uh, up to where that summer house was um, and and um, you uh, and ask some kind of protection there so that that means that this is the end of the development on this bit of land I think that would help uh, uh, somewhat lessen the blow to the local people in that area thank you So obviously the the agent has already indicated that it's going to be new um, Cornish hedge banks uh, created or sorry um, erected along this boundary. And what you're now requesting is planting, if I have read you correctly, kind of all the way along here. Is this correct? Yes, that is, that is correct, Amy. So um, it, it, it then just gives it uh, some protection because it, it may be a year or so before the, the neighbourhood plan is at a stage where it will carry weight. I know they're working on it very hard, but that would, I think, uh, give some comfort to the parish council. Thank you. Fine. OK, um, next speaker, Councillor Mould, Carol. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, could I ask, um, when the applicant um when the application was put in for further tpos on these trees what was the reason for refusal please i believe carol and i have to i have to admit i don't i haven't i can't remember the exact wording but i believe it was just due to the fact they weren't considered to provide 
enough of a public amenity value because that's normally the main reason why a TPO is placed on a on a tree or a group of trees is to do with the public amenity value um, but I, I, I wouldn't want to be quoted on that because I don't exactly know. Okay um, thank you very Steve much. Steve and Carol if you, yeah, if you could uh, drop your hands please and uh, close the burden. Yeah so I'm intrigued really um, it's changed ownership already from pre-planning to this. Uh, um, how much of the whole site, it's lovely to have the map up and talk to it, uh, brings me back to the old days. How much of the site is all in one ownership? Um, so you can see the blue on this map that I've got here, the blue yeah. line. Yeah. is the extent of the land ownership of the applicant and obviously the red line is where we've got the current application and where has had the previous permission here. Yeah, you could have a problem then, don't you? A big problem. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Mary, Councillor May, your hand is up. Could you drop yours down, please, Neil? Yeah, th thank you, Chairman. Um, could could you could the planning officer again just show us the whole of the garden area? Uh, from the uh, photograph or a plan, which one would you? Yeah, both. Thanks. Both. If I start again. Um, so this obviously just is the site plan. And these are just some of the photographs. Okay. Same as any want to stop on. OK, Mary, did you? Um, yeah, just if I could just ask a quick question, Chairman. Yes, okay. and, and it's it's usual, is it, to have this much as curtilage of a garden? Well, yeah, that's quite a difficult question to answer, really. I mean, as we all know, different houses have different curtilages, different size plots. Um, it, it's not uncommon in rural areas to have large domestic curtilages. Um, but it's you know it's, it's hard to kind of give a general uh, answer on that. I'm afraid, really. Thank you, Chairman. I think I've got my own um, ideas on whether it's a garden or now. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, Councillor Pascoe, Jane. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just a thought, really. Um, I'm not quite sure if I heard Amy um, respond, to Councillor Rushworth. Is it possible to put a condition on to have the trees lining the left hand side of the road? Because I feel that if that isn't the case, then there is no real solid boundary to stop infill going on. It seems this site has formed from your map, your plan has formed a sort of a triangle. And if that land is all in that ownership, Will we be looking at further applications as infill if we don't put a solid boundary through? Yeah, um, it's obviously something that I would um, need to address with the agent. Also, we have to be mindful that, as Gavin said previously, uh, landscaping has not been has not formed part of this outline permission, and it would be looked at as reserve matters. Um, so. Gavin may be able to correct me here uh, as to whether it's better to wait for the landscaping to be done as part of that reserve matters or whether it is um, suitable to put a condition on. But I'm not I'm not sure which would be the best approach, if I'm honest. Yeah, if I could come in, Gavin. Thank yeah. you, Chairman. Yeah, my view on that is landscaping is the appropriate time to require landscaping. If members felt they can't wait, they probably want the end of the world to put it on now. Um, be careful. Be careful about your reasonings, though. Um, new development to the left, which I, I, I'm thinking between the lines, is what you're trying to prevent. Would be assessed on its merits in any case, and if it's the countryside with planting, it's the countryside with planting. So it would be extending built form of St Judy into the countryside, regardless of that boundary line being there. But so the answer is, you can if you really want. We as officers would prefer you to wait to when it's submitted as landscaping. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 
OK, I, Jane? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, both officers. Thank you. Councillor Chair. Parsons. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, who's that? Would you like me to stop sharing my screen? Oh, yes, please, Just Amy. Just keep it there, Amy, please. Oh, sorry. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Adrian, where you go? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Amy, something that's not really been discussed is there's now a new dwelling which been which has been built next to the old rectory which isn't marked on page 19 but is um mentioned on page 23 oh you can see it drawn in on page 23 and if we go back to the picture that you were just showing of the garden i think if you look closely is that the new house through the trees yeah yeah, kind of yeah it is that's what i thought so would you consider this site to me when i look at the map with the new house there this is almost a rounding off infill type plot additionally to it being on previously developed land do you see it like that or not yeah that's exactly how we do see it um you know in my report i discussed that it we consider that it is rounding off land um but what we also wanted to bring to the attention of members is that if uh, they disagreed with that uh, decision or that recommendation of it being a rounding off, that we would also consider it to be previously developed land in a sustainable location for development. So in our opinion, um, yes, it, it does it does meet the rounding off, but it would also meet the, the, the previously developed land route as well. Thank you. I think with everything that's going on there, it's difficult to refuse it, but we'll leave that for the debate. Fine. If you could drop your hand and confirm to me that there are no other hands raised. Thank you, Chair. Now that's all we have listed to speak Fine. now. Um, thank you, Amy. In that case, we're now going to open debate. Who would like to start the ball rolling, please? Uh, Councillor Parsons. Thank you, Chair. As we have no rush for people to kick this off, I'll have a go. Um, it's been an interesting listen to all the people who have spoken and asked questions so far. I personally just feel with everything that's going on at this site, with it being previously developed land. I know Councillor May asked the question, is it a garden? And we look at it and it's a large, large plot. Part of me wonders with the old rectory next door, if it was part of this type of old gentleman's kind of residence where they had large gardens, obviously with the summer house at the bottom, I kind of think that's probably the way it was back then. Um, from the picture it looks like quite a large field but having said that when you look at the vegetation on the plot it doesn't look to me as a farmer like land that has been farmed so i think i'll give the case officer the benefit of the doubt with this and obviously she has the historic mapping to back it up that it is a garden so i think it's previously developed land i don't see how we can argue that it's not really a rounding off plot because with the new house we have houses pretty much all around this site on the two sides which are required for it to be a rounding off or infill plot um i think the agent referred to a plot at piper's pool which was one at appeal which i would consider to be far worse than this one so i don't see i don't see how this could be defended at an appeal um as councillor holly mentioned I think it would be good if we could condition the trees or a management plan at this stage. Um, with regards to the trees that have been cut down, that's happened. And if trees aren't TPO'd, well, we can't really do a lot about it, sadly. Um, so I'd be happy to recommend it for approval. Thank you. Thank you. If you could drop, if you could drop your hand, Councillor Long is next up, followed by Councillor Craiger. Andrew. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I have to find myself agreeing with uh, Councillor Parsons. It's um, we're in a situation where, with the new policies that were came back eighty eight years ago, the burden of the uh, the uh, the burden is now for people to prove you can't build, not that you can. 
So the the um, so I don't believe the objectors have provided us with the information that we would need to give us a reason to refuse the application. Um, so for all the reasons that Adrian uh, Council Parsons set out, I'll I'll second Councillor Parsons' recommendation. Fine. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Councillor Craig or Nick. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I sort of tend to agree. Uh, I don't think there's actually any grounds for refusing the this act because it is only an outline. A lot of my concerns relate to um, the trees and the landscaping, which will be dealt with by reserve matters. I think there is a, a, a fear of sort of um, development creep along here as, as this is being talked about in, in terms of rounding off um, and, the, and there's a concern that there could be a further application coming forward for more rounding off and then possibly a third one again for more rounding off and it just keeps going and I think um, putting that condition in now early on with this I know it's only an outline but putting that condition on to have that boundary uh, definitively marked by the access road to, to at least try and prevent some of that um, th th those concerns and address those concerns so yeah I'm happy to support it but only if we can put that condition on about having um, some kind of a boundary along the um, I assume it will be the western side of the access road into the site. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, Councillor Mole, Carol, can you drop your hands down, um, Andrew, please, and Carol, when you finish? Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Mr. Chairman. Um, this is very clever development, isn't it? Because, you know, I, I would want to refuse this, and I can see where this is going in future. That, that will be rounded off, that will be filled out within in four or five years, but we are where we are today. You know, we've got two not built. We've got two more coming along. It's all creep around. We haven't we cannot refuse this. I'm very sad that whoever decided not to put more TPOs on those trees. Um, I'd be really interested to know why they chose not to do that, but they decided where we are. Um, and I'd just like to have it noted that I very, very reluctantly will support this. I just think I feel very sorry for St. Judy and the parish council who have tried so hard to you know, they've accepted something thinking that, OK, that's going to be it with, a, with reservations. And it just goes to show that sometimes the parish councils, their reservations do come true and it's, and it's very sad for them. But reluctantly, I think I'm going to have to support it. Thank you, Carol. Um, Neil Burton? Yes. Yeah. Burton. Yeah. Can I concur with everything Carol said? Um, my problem is if I support it, I'm supporting these nonsense of reserve matters, which in my recent um, experience are, aren't worth the paper they're written on and people just do what they like after. And I just think that uh, we've, we've got a problem. And I just wonder, I know Gavin's gone now, but I just wonder if, if we can have much stronger uh, when we do outline approval, on reserve matters, not just leave it an uh, open door, because that's what we call at the moment, an open door. Uh, I and mean, uh, I, I, I struggle. I don't think, uh, um, Neil, I don't think Gavin has actually gone, and no doubt yeah. I will be bringing Gavin in shortly with Amy anyway, yeah, uh, but, and he can clarify what you're saying if he wishes yeah. to. So yeah. I don't well, think he's actually gone. Yeah, lovely. Thank okay. You. Fine. Uh, Chairman, um, it's Emma Pope. Meeting producer, could I just, um, uh, Councillor Flashman has dropped out of the meeting. Yeah. So could we just have a couple of minutes adjournment uh, just so he can read our in so he doesn't miss anything? Certainly fine. And yeah. if we can ensure members' mics are muted during those moments, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'll let you know as soon as he rejoins.
Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. He's just going to try and redial now. Thank you. And you'll tell me when he's on, obviously. I will do, yes. Thank you. Chairman, it's Emma Code, meeting producer. He still hasn't joined the meeting. I don't know if you wish to continue without him or carry on waiting. I, I think we, I think we will because we do have public members also yeah. in attendance. So I think we will proceed uh, accordingly. Okay. And can I thank everyone for their patience, especially the the people who are dialing in and watching on uh, on live streaming. But it is a requirement under these rules that we do ensure, where possible, continuance is uh, is is in place. Um, uh, coming back now, I, uh, Councillor Pasty, has this a lot. Well, has that gone back up, or has it just not gone down for the moment? I, my hand is a new hand. All right, thank you. That's fine. Uh, Councillor Holly, you were the next on. Where you go? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I want to tell you why I support this application, Mr. Chairman, and sort of it's sort of historical. There's two things. First of all, as you know, in the Planning Act, starting the 48 when 1948 one, and, and subsequent acts and subsequent governments have said that first of all we should look look at an application that it's okay, and then see if there's anything against it. Not that it's not okay, and see if there's anything in for favour. And the second thing is that um, in our local plan we quite clearly wanted development to be around villages and of uh, infilling and rounding off villages and not stuck out in the open countryside. And that's what this is, Mr Chairman. So even if subsequent applications do come in, it probably is probably still rounding off and it does keep the development within the villages rather than the country. And I can't see any good reason to refuse this, Mr Chairman, bearing in mind the previous history. I have got quibbles about the trees, as you know, but that's down to planning law, which is very, very weak on trees, I think. So I'm going to support it, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for that little bit of history there as well. Interesting. Um, Councillor Pascoe, across to you. Yes, just briefly, thank you, Mr Chairman, letting me come in. Just briefly to say that I would be supporting it very reluctant, reluctantly um, and only if there were conditions about a more permanent boundary, as was discussed and uh, mentioned previously um, and, and my, my point for that really is is that I have taken into account the unanimous objection from the parish council and also the results of the um, survey for the neighbourhood plan which although it has no weight 
all neighbourhood plans have stalled at the moment due to COVID. And I think it's it's relative that to, to, to take on board that 91% were positive that they didn't want existing green space to be touched for development. So I, I really would have to think carefully before I support it without those conditions of a more structural boundary. Fine. Thank you, Jane. Um, Emma, I see you came in there. Is it news on Jim, is it? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I've managed to speak to Councillor Flashman on the telephone. He will be unable to dial back in again, but he has asked um, if I could just say on his behalf that he would have supported the proposal and his comments are that the root systems are different than those described by the uh, tree preservation order and the domestic curtilage precludes any TPOs unless put on by the planning committee. Thank you. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Jordan, Barry, over to you. Yeah, th thank you, Chairman. I seem to be having a problem. Um, I, it logged me out for about two minutes, but I've just got back in. It's still not working right, but I did miss a bit of the debate, so I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. That's that's all it was. It's just a fine, but you're back with us now anyway. Yeah, I'm back right. in. Fine. No questions, though. Everything's okay, is it? Yeah, uh, well, I think the debate went on as, as everybody else is saying, so I've got no complaints. With right. That. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Barry. Um, Vice Chair, uh, are there any more hands up? I can't see any. No, that's it. Only Barry's. I don't think he's Fine. lowered it yet. So, no, no. all done. Thank what you. I, what I would like to do here now is to, we've got a proposal and a, a seconder, but I think I'd like to bring in Amy or Gavin Smith on this just to uh, talk to us about the, the management plans and tree conditions and the things that have concerned us. So Gavin or Amy, would you like to come in and explain things? Thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Um, if I can answer this, Amy, I'm more than happy to. Um, in terms of Councillor Burden's concern, I, I do get that in that if you're minded to approve it today in an outline stage, no one knows what the houses will look like eventually. So my message to you as committee is, and I know you already know, is that we're not what houses may look like, and invariably some of you will probably have different aspirations for what they'll look like in any case. So that's a matter for another day when a reserve matters application gets submitted, we'll then be able to have a look at everything in terms of what the houses would look like, their size, their scale, abate, their, their, their impact on neighbours. So please bear that um, aside. In terms of landscaping, I've listened carefully to what the committee have said, and I think we should put a condition on um, to require the boundary along the to require structural landscaping along the western boundary. Um, trees themselves, you're correct that they're not protected at the moment, so I think we all know the options available for the developer there. I hope that they don't do that. Um, trees make a better development, and in my mind, trees make a development more. Um, appealing to many buyers also so increase the value of development so hopefully those trees will stay in terms of what we can we can or can't do now and this permission if you're minded to grant it now as set out for the current conditions um, we'd need to know at the next stage which would be reserved matters how all the trees are going to be protected and they'd need to so that's when we look at tree protection zones and um, how the roots will be protected in relation to what's been proposed so at that stage we'll know where the siting is of the new homes so we'll be able to make direct assessments as to how they'll impact upon trees. We'd also get um, landscaping, of course, at that stage. So my recommendation to you as committee is that um, put a condition on now if you're minded to approve it for the, for the structural planting on the western boundary. We'll keep the condition on now to um, require that examination at the next stage for how trees are going to be protected. And of course, landscaping is something that needs to be examined at reserve matter stage anyway, so that's when we'd capture replanting and biodiversity gain as well. Thank you, Chairman. Fine, thank you, Gavin. Um, back to Adrian and Andrew, you've heard what uh, Gavin has just said with regards to conditions. Are you happy with your proposal going ahead? Uh, what's your comments on those, please? Andrew, I see you come up first. Well, uh, right. Adrian is proposing it because I, I, I would be yeah. wrong. No, could. I'm happy with everything that's been said by Gavin. Uh, Andrew usually comes in with something more sensible than me. So, well, not on this <laughs> occasion, uh, Councillor Parsons. I think um, what Gavin said is eminently sensible. So, yeah, I would like to see that added. Fine. Okay. okay. That's fine. So, in that case, we, we have a proposal by Councillor Parsons, seconded by Councillor Long, um, for approval. 
um, in line with recommendation by the officers with the conditions that we have just heard discussed and sort of pointed out. So can we do the roll call for against or abstentions, please, across to you, Rowena. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Yeah, for following Gavin's help, uh, I, yeah, yeah. I, will, I will support it. Fine, Thank lovely. You. Thank you. Councillor Craker. Four. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Greenslade. Four. Councillor Holly. Councillor Holly. Four. Four, sorry. Four. Thank you. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Long. Four. Councillor May. Reluctantly, four. Councillor Mould. Reluctantly, four. Councillor Pasco. Reluctantly, four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. And Councillor Batters. Four. Thank you. And this has been unanimously approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, and the reluctant ones, I, I appreciate that will be there. <laughs> Noted. Um, in that case, we now come to the end of our applications today and the end of today's virtual meeting. Um, once we get the the uh, word from Emma that the live screen is ended, if we can hold till that moment and at that, after she's announced that, if we've got any comments anyone wishes to make with regards to the meeting itself or anything, feel free to do so. But can you not comment until such times as Emma's give us the OK? Cross to you, Emma. Thank you.